I was thinking, you know, as Pastor Larry was saying, Randy, you know, a lot of times if you think about these, these topics like within Christianity and stuff, Mary, a lot of times if you, just pl- if you just apply a little common sense to it, things will make sense as well. Uh, just to give you an example, let me tell you guys uh, something that happened just recently. Uh, somebody had said that basically from what, I was, from what I was seeing was they were saying that there's no such thing as sin anymore in the New, in the New Testament. Now, first off, an alarm should go off in your head, right? Because that sounds kind of funny. Like, there's no such thing as sin anymore? Like, what about all the billions of scriptures that say that there's sin in the New Testament then, you know? And so, the the scripture, from what it seems, again, like, I could be putting words in this person's mouth because this happened just recently. But the scripture that this person was using was the scripture in Hebrews that says uh, that that we should not no longer have a consciousness of sins. But just think about, just think, slow down and just think about it for a minute. There's no more sin because we shouldn't have a consciousness of sins. That doesn't even make sense, right? That's like saying, that's like saying uh, there's no such thing as unhealthy people because we shouldn't eat unhealthy. It just doesn't make sense, right? Like, so if you just apply a little common sense sometimes to scriptures like this, then you can kind of see where, where there's like error sometimes, you know? So, uh, you know, we, we've said this before, and uh, I'm going to say it again. Whenever you come to church, it's not a place to leave your brain outside the door. Absolutely. You should always come and just uh, come with, you know, with your brain in its place ready to receive. Now, I'm not saying that I have all the answers and that everything makes sense to me. But like I said, I, I just like to go with common sense sometimes, sometimes as well. So the, the Bible says that, what did Paul say? He says, I'm going to worship the Lord with my spirit and with my understanding. I'm going to worship him with reason. You know, uh, there's a scripture that says, come, let us reason together. Let's get the scriptures. Let's look at them. Let's see what the scriptures are trying to say. And let's just apply a little common sense to things as well. Amen? Amen. Yes. Anyways, I wanted to throw my two cents in there. <laughs> yeah, because there's some, there's, some, uh, there's some craziness out there. You know, there's some, there's some things that are being said that you have to kind of always be, always be on alert. Amen? The Lord's whistling at us. Amen. <laughs> that's right <laughs> yeah um now i wanted to i wanted to say something uh when we were worshiping back there uh that song man just really ministered to me the rooftops song now that song always ministers to me but uh something hit in my spirit and it wasn't even a part of the song it's the part where she says lord here i am uh with with arms wide open here i am lord I'm here with arms wide open, you know, and I I don't know, I just, I felt like I really don't know where I'm going with this, but I felt just impressed, you know, to say that, that you might not have the answers figured out in your life right now. You might not have everything all together. You know, you might be stressed out or you might be going through something right now, but if you simply just open your arms and say, Lord, here I am with arms wide open, then God will come and minister to you. That's all he needs. You know, all he needs is just a yes from his people. All he needs is just a willing heart that's, that's ready to just be molded by God, that's ready, to, that's ready to just say, Lord, I just want to be changed by you, Father. I don't know how to change myself. I don't know what to say, what to do in this situation, where to go, who to talk to. But I know that if I just say yes to you and I just say, Lord, here I am, then that's enough for God. You know, I like the way the Bible says that with faith the size of a mustard seed is enough for God. Amen. Just, you ever seen a mustard seed before? How little it is? Real little. Microscopic almost. And God says that little bit is all I need to work with. And it's, it's, it's so true. You know, Mary, like, God doesn't ask much from us. If you really think about it, he doesn't ask much from us. It, yes, he wants us to meet him halfway. But if we can just come with that willing spirit, he says, I'll do the rest. If you meet me, meet me somewhere. If you just show up, I will do the rest. There's not a better feeling in the world than when you know you have to do something, something really important. And then when you go there, somebody steps in and they say, you know what? I'm going to take care of it. Just show up. I'll take care of everything you need. That's a good feeling, right? Because it, it takes a big weight off of your shoulders, right? God is saying, don't try to figure out 
the sin issue that you might be battling today. Don't try to figure out that relationship issue that you have today. Don't try to figure out that, that financial problem. And I'm, I might be getting a little bit into my message already, but I always say, you know, whenever we go through situations, we immediately enter panic and we try to fix it right away. But God's saying, don't even try to figure it out. Just come and say, Lord, here I am. If God don't do it, it won't get done. Amen. <laughs> yes. Amen. So, I, you know, I don't know why I was I was back there. And like I said, we've heard that song plenty of times, plenty of times. And and uh, it just ministered to me, you know, and I just felt like I needed to share that with you. all And it does kind of play a little bit into what I'm going to talk about today. So uh, anyways, it's good to see everybody here and, and everybody watching online. I hope you all can hear me. Uh, I know everybody in here can hear me, so I hope you all can hear me. And uh, we're just going to have a good time in the Lord today. Amen. Amen. You know, there, there, there's sometimes I'm going to be dead honest with y'all. Okay. Can I be honest with y'all today? Yes. Or do y'all want me to lie? No, I'm just lying. <laughs> it's like, no, lie to us, right? Lie to us. I'm going to be honest with y'all. Sometimes when I don't see a lot of people coming to church, I get discouraged. Hey, I get discouraged. Amen. But I understand that what's going on right now. And I understand, I, it's a unique situation. I see that. But still when you don't see that many people, it does kind of hurt you a little bit, you know, but again, I'm going to say it again because it's going to get twisted what I'm saying. I understand that there's a virus out there and people don't want to come. I get that. But I always say this, if, if you don't come, still come to his presence Amen. wherever you're at. Amen. Amen. You know, we don't, if you don't want to come to church, that's fine. And uh, I, I get it. I understand, you know, it's just like, it kind of pricks you a little bit, you know, but uh, like I said, I understand. As soon as I step off this pulpit, you know, I'm, I'm going to feel 100% better. I know that every, all the different, the circumstances that we're in and stuff. But it doesn't excuse you not walking in the Spirit. It doesn't yes. excuse you Amen. not having a relationship yes. with Jesus Amen. just because we're going through this virus. If anything, I think that our relationship with God should be stronger now than it is than yes. it's ever before. Why is it, Mary, that whenever things happen to us, we drift away from God rather than exactly. to God? Amen. Come on. Why? That's that's the silliest thing any of us can do. Amen. And I'm preaching to myself, too, a little bit. Whenever something bad happens, we, we it's like we, we, we add fuel to the fire, so to speak. And we should not do that. Where is the solution? It's it's with God. It's in his presence. Everything you need is found in God's presence. And I, I know people get tired of probably hearing me say that because it's so simple. But that's the truth, man. Let's figure out, am I in God's presence? Am I receiving everything that he has for me today? Am I showing up, like I said, meeting God just a little bit, and then he's going to take care of the rest? That's their solution right there. So, man, you know, just uh, don't, you know, hey, maybe this, this is a little something I can share with you guys, too. Uh, did, does anybody in here feel a little discouraged today? Is anybody brave enough to say that? Would anybody raise their hands? Amen. Hey, it's we, we get a little discouraged sometimes, right? Amen. I, hey, I, I felt a little discouraged today. I felt a little discouraged this week. We had some people in here that raised their hands saying that they were discouraged. We all go through that. We know what discouragement feels like, right? But encourage yourself in the Lord. Amen. Encourage yourself in God. You know, because if everything else goes away, your 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 health your finances, those relationships that you're worried about, if everything else goes away, you still have the one thing that says, I'm gonna stand with you until the end of time. I'm never gonna go away. I'm always gonna be right there by your side. And that's all you need in this world, amen? That's all you need right there to make it through this world, amen? I know it hurts and it's easier said than done. Very easier said than done, right? It's that some of, the, some of these loads we carry are, it seems like they're uncarryable that's a word. <laughs> it seems like it's impossible, right? But the Bible says that nothing is impossible with yes, God. Amen. He says with men, it might be impossible. But with Jesus, with me, it's not impossible. He says all things are possible to him who would what? Believe. And that's what I'm asking you guys today. Amen. I just feel the Lord in this place yes. today. You know, I'm, yes, yes, yes. I, I'm you know, I, I'm going to worship God even when nobody else is worshiping God. You know, I'm going to stand for Christ even when nobody else stands for Christ. You know, I don't care if this entire city walks away from Christ. I'm going to continue to walk with him. Amen. Paul said everybody, Paul was in jail, Mary. He was in jail, shackled in a dirty dungeon. He says, everybody walked away from me. He says, nevertheless, Christ stood with me. He stood with me. He's the one. You know, I, I was... 
Let, let me say this. When other people walked away from you, God stood with you. But God says, just as I was with you in those days, so will I be with you in these days. God ain't going to walk out on you. Your friend might walk out on you. Your co-workers might walk out on you. Your husband and your wife might even walk out on you. <laughs> Ouch. Hey, it happens, right? People will leave you. Your dog is going to leave you. But God, that's right, but God will never, ever walk away from you. Amen. So I, I don't know where I, where, why I said all that, man, but I just felt like we needed a little encouragement in this place. Amen. We need some uplifting. Church is a place to come and get encouraged. Amen. And, um, you know, I want everybody watching online and I want you guys to don't lose hope. You know, don't lose, don't lose your momentum in running this race. You know, Paul says you have need of, uh, need of endurance. Yes. Keep running the race. Keep, keep fighting. It, it gets hard, but that's not the time for you to stop fighting. That's for you to start fighting harder whenever things happen. Don't slow down. Just keep going forward, man. Keep going forward. So anyways, I hope that blessed y'all. That little message blessed me. So why don't we stand? We're going to be dismissed now. I'm just playing. Okay. Nobody caught that. Okay, go to 1 Corinthians chapter 1. I was like, what? Yeah, right? <laughs> 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Is everything okay, Pastor Larry, with the live? And everything, everything all right? Yeah, I need to Okay. All right. Yeah, if, if you're watching online and it's kind of, you know, um, lagging and stuff like that, we're sorry. We're, trying to, we're still trying to get all this stuff fixed and get it working. So just bear with us. Keep watching, okay? So 1 Corinthians chapter 1. I'm going to pull it up on my phone. All right. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, church. And um, go to verse 18. You're going to beat me there. Hang on. Chapter 1. Hey Amen. Pastor Larry's pulling it up right there if you're waiting on that. All right, guys. Look at what it says in verse 18. It says... For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to those who are being saved, it is the power of God. Okay, so let me stop right there. Hey Amen. I feel like I want to preach off of just that right there. The message, the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. How many of you have ever felt like whenever you're sharing your faith or you're talking to somebody about Jesus, you feel like you're trying to sell them a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> An unbelievable vacuum cleaner. <laughs> I don't know about y'all, man, but I'm going to be dead honest with y'all in this place today, okay? I'm kind of a sheep about my faith. Like, I'm not, uh, Pastor Larry, I'm not, I'm not the kind of person to just go, Alma, and just start wit witnessing to somebody about Jesus Christ. That's just not me. Uh, usually what happens, like, in my circumstance is I just be me and if they like me which I, who, who should who can't like me I don't know. <laughs> and if they like me and, and they see that I'm a good friend to them and all that then they I'm just a down-to-earth person they want to know what you got because you're such a friendly person and you're such a kind person and you do for people and I want to know what it is that you got amen but I'm not the kind of person um, they can just really I'm actually really shy when it comes to that. Going up to somebody in a restaurant saying, can I pray for you? Or going up to somebody saying, let me tell you about Jesus. I'm never going to go door knocking. I'm never going to hand out tracts. I'm not going to do any of that. Sorry, Charlie. <laughs> now, for other people, that works really well. And people are really strong in that area. And it's effective. In some cases, it is. Now, door knocking, I don't think is that effective because most people don't answer the door when they're there anyways. They turn off all the lights and get in the closet when you go and knock on the door. <laughs> <laughs> because they don't, want, they don't want you to talk to them about Jesus, right? They're trying to eat breakfast, which I understand. But I'm not the kind of person that, that really does that, you know, but I, I have done it before, but that's just not me altogether. But 
one of the things that happens a lot of times whenever you're talking to people about Jesus or whatever is they're probably going to look at you and think that you're a little foolish. When you're just talking to a random person out there, right, talking to somebody at work or whatever, they're going to look at you and they're going to think you're kind of foolish. Now, why is that? Why is that, man? It's because you're talking about something that just doesn't make sense in their natural mind. You know, you're talking about something that is just blowing their mind and they, they didn't grow up with Jesus or they didn't grow up, go, grow up going to church and things like that. So it's just foolish to them. That's why the Bible says right here, we're going to keep reading, but it says that the message of the cross, Jesus dying, uh, being crucified for your sins, him forgiving your sins, all that is foolishness to the world. And it is. The world thinks the message that you got is foolish. I'm going to say that again. The world thinks that the message that you're preaching, what's coming off of your lips, is foolish. In other words, it's a waste of time. It's sad, but that's what people think, right? They don't, they don't care. This, this isn't going to help me pay my rent. This isn't going to help me get anywhere in life. You know, I don't even believe in that junk. You know, how many of y'all talk to somebody like that? And it's, it can be a little discouraging, right? If you don't understand this verse, it can be a little discouraging. But I want y'all to understand this verse today because it says right here next, it says, but to us who are being saved, all of us in here, it's the power of God, power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and I'll bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. You know, whenever Jesus went to the cross, he disrupted everything that makes sense in the world. He changed everything. I believe that the cross was the most significant event that happened ever in the history of the world. And it turned everything upside down because it, it reconciled people you know, back to God. Now we need to be reconciled to God. And it, you know, he forgave our sins and he made things right. And so that's what this scripture means. It says, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise. I'll bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. All these people that think they know that they got this understanding, that they got everything figured out, I'm going to make, I'm going to show them that they don't really have it figured out, Brother Randy. And that's true. You know, just the moment, the moment that you think you have it all figured out is the moment that you don't have it figured out. Because when you start thinking you know it and you're, you're something, God's going to come to you and he's going to say, I got something else to teach you. <laughs> There's more to this. God goes deeper than what we think, right? Anyways, let's continue. Verse 20, it says, where is the wise and where is the scribe? And then look what it says, and keep, we'll keep going here. It says, where is the disputer of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world through wisdom did not know God, it pleased God through the foolishness of the message preached to save those who believe. So God, it pleases God that this message of the cross is saving people. And you know, many, many, I would, I think I'm, I speak for everybody here when we say we might not have everything all figured out in our theology, right? Whenever you figure out all this theology stuff, call me <laughs> and let me know because I don't have all this theology stuff figured out. I don't have all these, you know, I have many questions out there. And when I, when I go to heaven, I'm going to ask Jesus a lot of questions. I don't know about you, but I'm going to ask him a lot of questions. You, you might not have all this figured out, but all you know is that you once were lost, but now you're found. Amen. That's all you know. All you know is that this foolishness, this foolish message of the cross has saved you and that it brings completion to you. It fills a hole in your heart. Amen. Come on, man. I know. Amen. I know that when I was, uh, I, I, man, when, whenever, whenever I first got saved, Brother Albert, I, I told you guys this before, but, you know, I wasn't, I, I didn't get really crazy in, in drugs and, you know, all this all these, these crazy things, you know, that a lot of other people might get involved in. That, that wasn't me when God, when God found me, Alma. But I, I knew that when Brother Larry was the one that started preaching to me, right, and started witnessing to me, so I thank God for Brother Larry. But I knew that there was something missing in my life. That's all I knew. I knew that before I met Larry, and I used to tell myself that. There's something missing in my life. And there's a hole that I feel like I can't get filled anywhere else. You know, people don't feel it. I just don't feel complete. You know, I don't feel like 
Mm -hmm. uh, me, I feel like there's more to life than this. I feel like there's a deeper love than this. I wasn't even, uh, I, I didn't even go to church. You know, I wasn't a church person. I was one of those people, I called myself a Catholic, but I didn't even, I never even stepped foot in a church. <laughs> right, I was the, I was a Catholic, right? But I didn't care what anybody else said, but I didn't even know anything about God. But uh, I, I, all I knew is that I was lost. All I knew is that I didn't have, I didn't have fullness in my life. And so when I started going to church, that, that innocence that I had stayed with me because I knew that I, knew that I had found what I had been longing for all these years. Amen. I knew that God fulfilled that hole that was in my heart Amen. and that you know, everything I needed was found in Christ. So even then, Pastor Larry, I didn't have all of my theology figured out. And I was wrong on a lot of things, but I would go to church every Sunday and every Wednesday, never look back after that first Wednesday I went. And I would go and I would just let God feel me. I would just let God love on me. I would just let God touch me. I would cry. I would, I would speak in tongues. You know, I would raise my hands. I didn't know anything, but all I knew is that I wanted more of God. So if I saw a group of people standing up there shouting, screaming, and it felt like they were getting touched, I went up there, and you know what I did? I shouted, I screamed, and I got touched by the Lord. <laughs> if I saw a, a, a group of women dancing and screaming, you know what I did? I went, and I just got right in the middle of them and said, oh, God. <laughs> and I would scream, too. And you know what? God would touch me because of that. God would feel me because of that, because it goes back to what Pastor Larry is saying. I wanted God. I was yeah. seeking God, Amen. and I didn't care what I had to do to get God. I would, it, it didn't matter. Hey, it's been a long time since I fasted. Hey, Amen. I think I can use a little. No, nah, I'm just kidding. I don't make y'all mad. <laughs> it's been a, hey, but I, you know, hey, I, I don't see nothing wrong with fasting today. If you want to fast, fast, man, because I, I will testify that it can. What it does is it, it, it aligns your mind to what God is doing. It's not the fast in and of itself that brings God, but what fasting does is it, make, it puts your mind nothing on Christ. And then when, when your mind is so in tune and it's and it so set to Christ, God will, you'll begin to hear God more. Yes. You'll, be, you'll begin, you, you will. Like you, you, it's, it's amazing how much radio waves you have going around you and you don't even realize it, how much chatter you have going around you until you tone everything else out. Mm -hmm. And fasting is a good way to do that. But there are people that get legalistic about it, and that's the problem. They say, well, if I don't fast, God's not going to make a breakthrough for me. That's not true. And all fasting does is align your mind to God. I would go on three-day fast, and I would be starving. I would just eat one meal a day, and I remember God would just begin speaking to me. I had a spiral. I would write down as if God was just possessing me, which I know he wasn't. But I would write like God was just showing me things and revealing things to me. And... That's a, it's a good way to do it, right? But I, why did I do that? Because I wanted God. And I, you know, yeah, I mean, I, I don't fast anymore today, but I'm at that time in my life where I'm like, you know what? Well, like what Pastor Larry said at the beginning really spoke to me. I don't want just the theology. I don't want just, just, just church. I want to experience God and talk with God just like I can sit next to that chair and talk to Mary. And I want, I want a tangible relationship yes. with God that's yes. so real to me that you ain't going to tell me anything else about God because I can speak with God and I can talk with God yes. and God will speak to me. How many of y'all want that today? Amen. Yes. We need that. The church needs that experience right now. That's why, you, uh, that's why it's very important for you to have both things in your life and in your walk with God. You, you do need the, the, the right knowledge and the, and the understanding of the word. Uh, but you also need the experience of God in your yeah. life. You need, you, need the, you need the spiritual side of it yeah. as well. You know, I was thinking about it this week. I'm getting off on a bunch of crazy things right now. But I was thinking this week, America makes it so important for you to read your Bible. In other words, if you don't, I, I, I didn't grow up believing, but when I first started coming to church, Margaret, I believed that if I didn't read my Bible once a day, then I wasn't saved. Or I believed that I had to read my Bible once a day. That was my mindset. I have to read my Bible, otherwise God's going to be mad at me. So I got a question for you. What about all these people in the other countries that can't even have a Bible? Is God mad at them every day? Hmm. Makes you think, right? So why is it that in other countries like Africa and stuff, 
we always hear about these crazy healings and things that's going on over there. Because they're so open to whatever, to whatever it is God is doing. They're so in tune with the experience of God. To them, God is just like Albert, a person just sitting there. To us, come on. God, sometimes we don't believe that God is real. That's good. Amen. And I know we don't like to say that, but God is a pastime to us. He's something we do on Sundays and Wednesdays. But to these people, God is real. And God is powerful. And God is there. He, God is literally their source. That if they don't have God, they're not going to make it. Because they ain't even got no food in some of these places. So they have to depend on God. So my theory is that the reason why there's these greater moves, I guess if you want to say it, like experiences of God, is because they're not, they don't... Uh, that's all they have. Let me say it like that. That's all they, they can't have a Bible over there. They, they, they smuggle Bibles into their country. They literally smuggle them, hide them, just like if you were trying to get a pound of weed into the city. <laughs> they, you got to smuggle it, right? Now, I don't know because I've never done that, but <laughs> let me make that clear. But I do know that uh, drugs get smuggled in here, right? And how, I, I would imagine that you have to be very secretive about it. Of course you do, right? You have, to, you have to hide it. That's why people put it in their car seats. And then when you cut that car seat, what all that stuff pours out, right? <laughs> or they have it in the back of trucks, they smuggle it in. That's the same way that these countries do with Bibles, Pastor Larry. Some people even, uh, I read that some people, they don't even have full Bibles, but they pass around pages of the Bible just so that you can read a little bit. There are people in other countries that travel hours to go to Bible study, hours because they want it so bad, and they ask, they, they, I've read this before, they literally ask and say, Pastor, why don't more Christians in America go to church? There's a church literally on every block around this radius. Well, I shouldn't say that, but almost every block, right? But nobody wants to go to church. But these other countries would die for what you want. They thirst for what you have. They seek after what, you, what we have. And in our case, we have something great, too. We have the Bible. I believe that the Bible is God-inspired. Amen? I didn't get too many amens, but I believe that the Bible is important. I believe that God wants us to know the Bible and understand the Bible. I believe that it's a way to know God. So I think that now that we have that, we also need to get a little bit of the experience of God back in church as well. We also need to get a little bit of the spiritual side back in your lives as well. You've got to have both because we're a blessed people. Amen. We're a blessed people in America, and we need to start using the tools that we have. Like what Pastor Larry said at the beginning, the problem is not the quantity of scriptures and the quantity of churches in America, because there are so many. They're literally everywhere. You can go to Walmart and buy a Bible for 388 probably right now, a King James Bible. But the problem is the quality of using that stuff in our lives. It's there. We just need to use it. Amen? Anyways, why did I get off on that? I don't know. Amen. But uh, so here we are. So it pleased God through the foolishness of the message preached to save those who believe. So I, like I said, I didn't understand the message of God. I didn't understand the theology of God. All I knew is that this stuff seemed a little strange to me. This God stuff seemed a little weird to me. People speaking in tongues seemed a little weird to me. But all I know is that I wanted God. If you tell me that's God, I'm going to go and I'm going to get it. <laughs> doesn't matter what you say. I'm going to go after it. Amen. And so even though it might be a little foolishness, it, it might be a little foolish. God loves confounding the wise and he loves breaking the rules and he loves proving us wrong. Just like he did Job. The whole book of Job is just Job and God arguing <laughs> and God proving Job wrong. So God, let me tell you something. It seems like God loves to debate. <laughs> Seems like he loves to debate, and not because he tries. I don't think it's because he tries to show everybody that he's that he's something. It's just because he likes to show you that you're nothing without him. Amen. And he like he he a debate is supposed to be so that you can enlighten your opponent and the people around you. And that's what God wants to do when he speaks truth into your life. It's not to make you mad. When Pastor Larry gets up here and says some crazy things, just like I say some crazy things that might make you mad, it's not to make you mad. It's to enlighten you Amen. and to help you. 
Amen. And to grow you. Because if we loved you, we would tell you some things that you don't want to hear sometimes, right? But if I didn't love you, I would never tell you what you need to hear. I would always tell you what you want to hear, right? So the foolish things of God is what God loves to present. He spoke to somebody through a donkey one time. Amen. Foolish. Amen. Foolish. Think about if you were Mary, uh, the Virgin Mary, and you, went, you had to go tell your husband that I'm pregnant, but I never did anything with anybody. <laughs> Foolish. <laughs> I don't know. That, hey, the Bible says that Joseph was going to leave her. But I believe if God didn't intervene, he would have left her. God intervened and said that what she is conceived of is of the Holy Spirit. Yes. And the Bible uses that same word there. It doesn't, it doesn't just say that, the Holy, that that which was in her was conceived of the Holy Spirit. It also says that the power of God overshadowed her. And the Holy Spirit came upon her and put Jesus inside of her. Foolish things, though, right? Moses parted the Red Sea. Part of the Red Sea. Who can fathom that? That's foolishness. But God loves to present foolish things to the world. Jesus died and he rose again? That's foolish. That's silly. That can't happen. People getting raised from the dead, people being healed, that's foolishness. But it's not foolish to God. Amen. It's how he presents himself and confounds the wise. Amen? So it's, it's foolishness to the world. But it's power to you if you believe it. Amen. 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 Do I got some believers in this place today? Amen. Amen. I hope I got some good believers watching and some believers here in this place. The Bible says that Ephesians, uh, Ephesians says that this gospel is it gives you great power in Ephesians one, great power to all those who would believe. Amen. That's why if you believe you are a powerful person, you have power inside of you. But it goes back to what Larry said. We have to activate that power. Amen. We have to walk in that power. That's yes. a little bit. That's a little bit what I'm going to talk to you guys about today. Uh, as a matter of fact, we didn't read that part. Uh, let's jump down. Uh, look, go to verse 22 now, Pastor Larry. Look, the next one. So stay in that chapter. Just look at the next verse. Verse 22. Amen. Look what it says. For the Jews request a sign. And the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified to the Jews, a stumbling block, and to the Greeks, foolishness. Now, y'all know in the Bible, right, there's, a different, there's two kinds of people. There's Gentiles and there's Jewish people, right? And he says right here, the Jewish people, they request a sign, which they did. When Jesus was walking the earth, Alma, when he was there before this scripture was written, the Jewish people said, show us a sign and we'll believe that you're the son of God. But I guarantee you, even if he showed them a sign, they still wouldn't have believed. They would have said, what, what did they do when he did show them a sign? They said, you cast out devils by the devil. <laughs> There's your sign, but you're casting out devils by the devil. So unbelief is a terrible thing. It clouds your judgment, right? It's but the Jews, they wanted a sign. They were looking for a sign. Show us that you are the son of God. And then he says the Greeks, which you know, we can say is the Gentiles, they seek after wisdom. So the Jewish people, Albert, they seek after a sign. They say, God, show us that you're the son of God. And the Gentiles, they seek after wisdom, which actually in those days, Pastor Larry, the Greek people, they took a lot of pride in their wisdom and in their knowledge and knowing things. They, they gathered information from all over the place. So if you told them about Jesus and you lived in those days and you told a Greek Gentile about Jesus, they'd probably receive it, but they're going to look more for like the logical side in that. You understand what I'm saying? Like, is this true or, you know, can we trace this back or whatever? And so they're going to look more for like a logical sign in that. And then he says, but we preach Christ crucified, which to the Jews is a stumbling block. So, of course, they didn't like that, right? Christ crucified was a stumbling block to their faith. And to the Greeks, it is foolishness again. Stupid. You tell us that Christ rose from the dead, that's ridiculous. He cannot rise from the dead. That's what they would have said. So what you're saying is not true. But what? It's, it's impossible, right? But everybody in here believes that. We believe that Jesus rose from the dead. Amen? 
You better believe because if he didn't resurrect, then there ain't no point in us being here. That's right. He would, we're, what does the Bible say? That we're, if, if he didn't resurrect, then we're preaching in vain. Right? And then at verse 24, look what it says. But to those who are called. Amen. Who's called in this place today? Amen. Amen. To those who are called, both Jews and Greeks. We're, we're Gentiles. Mexican, like Pastor Larry says. <laughs> we're Mexicans. <laughs> Amen. Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. So the Jewish people are seeking after a sign. The Gentiles are seeking after wisdom. But he says Christ and the power and the message of the cross, the power of God, Christ, is the power and it is the wisdom of God. So you want to know where is power? What is power? What is wisdom? It's Christ and him crucified. Christ and him crucified. Some of you are like, I already knew that. <laughs> but, you know, it's like I said Wednesday. If we could just get back to, to the simplicity, Pastor Larry, of what Jesus did for us. And we, if we can go back to that and just really see what God has done for us, that would solve all of our problems. You know what the solution is to the problem you're going through right now? Is Christ and him crucified. Him on the cross. Are you looking to the cross? Amen. You know, the, 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 I know that this probably isn't like, oh, wow, but it's, this is the truth. Amen. The, the Bible says that the, the snake in the wilderness, when Moses lifted that snake up after the people were bitten by a real snake, they made a bronze snake and they lifted it up. And Moses told the people, if you get bit, look at this snake here and you will be healed. And so all you had to do was look at that snake and you would be healed. And then the Bible says in the New Testament, just as the snake was lifted up, Jesus said, so must I be lifted up. Yeah. So he, he made that comparison there. So in other words, if you need healing, where are you looking? Right. Where are you looking? Right. If you need whatever it might be, if you need a breakthrough in some area of your life, where are you looking? Where is your attention yeah. right now? You know, I, I know, uh, y'all know that uh, I, teach, I teach English, right? And I teach uh, the Chinese students online. And uh, I know when they're not paying attention to me. <laughs> Come on, y'all got kids, right? Y'all know yeah. when your kids aren't paying yeah. attention to you, right? right. And you, you know when their eyes are like this, right? <laughs> you know that they're not listening to you. They've probably got their phone right in front of them and they're playing on their phone, right? More than likely, because the, the, that's the, when you look at kids today, this is pretty much all you see them doing, right? Yeah. It's doing this right here. And uh, even some of us adults, amen, even I do that sometimes, right? And it's a sad thing, but you don't see anybody playing baseball outside anymore. <laughs> you don't see lightning bugs outside anymore, catching lightning bugs like I used to do. It's all, we, we can see them on here now, right? <laughs> Y'all want to see a lightning bug? I'll show you right now. I can show you 50 million videos of lightning bugs right now. I got lightning bugs in my pocket. But you know when people aren't paying attention to you, right? Uh, it's a, that's, I, I think I said it before, but that's kind of one of my pet peeves. Is like when I'm talking to somebody and, they're, and they look away or they start getting on their phone or they ask me a question and then as soon as I answer them, they pull out their phone and start doing that. I'm like, well, I'll just stop talking then, I guess. <laughs> you know, you're not listening anyways. I'm wasting my breath, you know, but... Uh, but you know when you know when people aren't when you're not paying attention to him. And as your pastor, I know when you're not paying attention to God. Amen. Amen. I, I think I'm rubbing people the wrong way today. But I know when I'm not paying attention to God. It's not hard to see. You know when, when somebody is distracted and they're not looking at Jesus lifted up on the cross. Why? Because you see depression all over them. You see, oh, it got quiet when I said that. You see depression all over them. You see anxiety all over them. You see negativity right. all over them. Yep. You see uh, fear all over them. Amen. You see anger on them. You see yeah. doubt all over them. It's all over their face. Yeah. Your face gives it away. Yeah. And I used, to, it, I used to, man, when I first got saved, I remember me and Pastor Larry, we used to talk about God all the time. And sometimes I would tell him, I would say, I'm just mad today. I'm just in a bad mood, you know. And what he would say, well, did you pray? <laughs> and uh, I remember him saying, telling me that at least once. And I would, 
no, I didn't pray. Well, there's your problem. <laughs> your eyes are not lifted up and looking at Jesus Christ. So what do you expect, man? What do you expect? You know, now, if you prayed, then let's talk about it. And let's see what, what's going on here. But if you haven't prayed yet, go pray first. And then come back and tell me. Amen. I feel like telling some of some people I know that whenever they want to complain to me about all their problems. Well, did you pray first? Did you seek God first? Did you go to him in prayer first and see what God has to say about this? Have you just went to God and said, God, my spouse is a thorn in my side. <laughs> my, I don't know what to do, God. I'm bringing this situation to you, and I want to know what you're going to do about this situation. Have you tried Jesus, like the old song says? <laughs> Have you tried that first? And then I guarantee you, when you come out of prayer, how do you feel? You feel about 10 times taller. Because even if you didn't hear an audible voice of God, you know that God heard you. And you know that you did exactly what God wants you to do, which is bring that problem to him. Yeah. He says, what does he say? Margaret, cast all your cares on me because the burden is too heavy for you to carry. Yeah. So give it to Jesus. Give it to Jesus. Come to him in prayer. So you have to put your eyes on him. He says, but to the people of the world, this is foolishness to them. This is silly to them. But to us, it is the power of God. The cross, this thing right behind me here, is the power and the wisdom of God. This is how God changed the world. By coming down in a body and being crucified on a cross for your sins, for my sins, and to bring you forgiveness. Amen. This is how he changed the world and this Amen. is how you get your breakthrough. Even your healing. He says that yeah. by his stripes you are healed. How he was whipped, how he was beaten. The Bible yeah. says that they pulled his beard out of him. That they whipped him, yeah. that they spit on him, that they punched him. He did all that so that you can be healed in Jesus' name. And what do we do? We walk around like this. It's a sad world, man. It's a sad world. Amen. We should be walking with our heads held high. Straight up. Amen. No matter what's going on out there in the world, you should be walking with your shoulders back, your heads high, confident, encouraged, knowing that God has already went before you. Amen. 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 I'm trying to encourage you guys today. Amen. I'm, reach, I'm grabbing my own word. Amen. I needed this. And then it says, uh, where did I stop? But to those who are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. So if you're taking notes or whatever, you know, you can write that down because that's what I'm talking to you all about. The power. Christ is the power and he is the wisdom of God because the foolishness of God is wiser than men. I love that. God on his worst day is greater than you on your best day. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Yes. So it, God is, he's all powerful. He's all knowledgeable, right? So we should never, ever think that we know more than God. Amen. And then look what it, uh, keep going, Pastor Larry. And the weakness of God is stronger than men. Amen. I love that. Even when God, God is not weak, but even if he was weak on his weakest day, he's still stronger than us, Brother Albert. You know, some of us men, we like to think that we're strong, right? That we're powerful, right? How does that song go? Um, uh, I thought I'd, oh, man, I'm just slipping a break. <laughs> yeah, there's that song. I was, yeah, right. I'm not as good as I once was or something like that. Or, and then there's a song that says, I can't, I thought that I was number one. I thought that I was something on my own, but I can't even walk without you holding my hand or whatever. I love that. And then he says, for you see your calling. Brethren, that not many wise according to the flesh. Let me back up because it sounds a little funny in the New King James. For you see your calling, brothers, that not many wise according to the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. So he's, what, he, what is he saying, guys? He's saying, look among yourselves. There's not many of you that finish school. <laughs> look among yourself. There's not many that are noble. He's like, look among your church. There's not many that are noble. There's not many that are great. The disciples were just fishermen, right. cussing fishermen. That's all they were, tax collectors, right? David was just a shepherd boy. Right. He was just a shepherd boy. Moses, we think Moses is big and powerful, but Moses couldn't even talk in front of people for a little while. He had to get Aaron to talk for him. He stuttered. 
And Lazarus was dead, but God still used him. Amen. <laughs> so it doesn't matter what you're going through, right? So there's not, there's not many great, like he says, according to the flesh. Right, there's not... Shoot, I wasn't valedictorian in my class. <laughs> Shoot, I didn't graduate with no honors or nothing like that. Man, I, you know, I wasn't anything you know, special or, or nothing like that. But yeah, we all have accomplishments, and that's good. God wants us to have accomplishments in life. Finish school. Uh, do your thing, man. You know, but know that all that is according to the flesh. And the, at the end of the day, it really is just according to the flesh. You know, I, I told my brother-in-law one time... Uh, uh, he was saying, you know, something about how, you know, his, his siblings, they're off doing great things. And he was like, man, you know, I just got a business, you know, a little truck business. And, you know, man, sometimes I get discouraged because I wish I could have did more in life. We've all felt that way, right? right. Yeah, how many of you wish you can go back and do better in school or, or go back and start a business or go back and do this? It's never too late, though. I'm going to throw that out there, too. It's never too late. But, he, you know, he told me that. And I said, well, I mean, look at it like this. And I tried to encourage him. I said, man, you got God. That's better than anything else yeah. out there. Right. You know, I was like, you, you tell me you got God. And hey, I believe it. You know, you got God in your life. So that makes you better off than your siblings did. Right. If you got God, it doesn't matter what you've accomplished on this, in, in, in this world. It's like I said, again, accomplish everything you, get, you can accomplish. Right. But in a couple hundred, or not even a hundred years, in 20, 20 years, 30 years, nobody's going to remember any of that. Yeah. It's all going to be gone. Yeah. You know, you're, you're going to be in the ground and people are going to move on with their lives. And so the important thing is God. Amen. What are you what you're doing right now with your relationship with God? So he's saying that not many people are noble. Not many in the church are they're mighty. There's not anything great to say about them. But he says in verse 27, but God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame. I think there's a little bit more to that. To put to shame the things which are mighty. So even if you feel like you haven't accomplished much today or you feel low and you know, you're a little discouraged today, you're the right candidate for God. Amen. <laughs> the moment you start saying, Lord, I'm nothing. What did Jesus say? There were two people. One was, be, uh, one was saying, God, I thank you that I'm not like this person standing next to me. I thank you that I pray three times a day, that I give everything I have. But then this other person was saying, what, Mary? God, have mercy on me, a sinner. I am nothing. That man went home blessed. Yes. That's the way we have to be, right? Yes. We, can't, we can't think we're anything before God. We can say, God, I am nothing without you. And then the moment you do that, the Bible says he will exalt those who bring themselves low. Amen. When you, when you realize that you're nothing without God, when you realize that you need the power and the wisdom of God, God will exalt you to where you want to be in life, to where you need to be in life. So that's all I'm asking you all today is where, where, where is your mind at? Where is your heart at? Is it on the power and the wisdom of God, which is the cross of Jesus Christ? Amen. Or is your mind on the news? The news everything that's going on in the news right now? Or is your mind on what you saw on your spouse's phone before you came to church today? <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Getting a little too close there, right? <laughs> Let me back up a little bit. <laughs> that's right, yeah. yeah, that's true, right? They probably weren't coming to church, but they turned the car around, right? <laughs> no, we ain't gonna go to church, we're gonna fix this. Go to, uh, go to, go to 1 Samuel chapter 17 real quick. Am I, are y'all feeling me this morning? Do y'all see what I'm saying? Amen. Is it blessing y'all? Amen. Amen. Are you awake? Amen. Amen. 1 Samuel chapter 17. Let me tell y'all, man, I was, I was trying to, I was trying to think of somebody that in the Bible, Alma, that, that really comes off as a person who really, really understood the heart of God and really understood that they were nothing without God. And the only person I can think of, Mary, was David. Because if, if you haven't read, you know, 1 Samuel, 2 Samuel, and Chronicles and see the life of David and some of his Psalms, you can just pick up in there, Margaret, that he's like, he really has this desperate need for God. He really understands that he knows he needs God. 
and that without God, he is nothing. Even though he was the king of Israel, he still, that, that, that's why the Bible says that he was a man after God's own heart. Because he knew how much he was nothing without God. He knew how much he needed. He didn't have all the power. He didn't have all the wisdom. He needed God. He needed that power and that wisdom. And then, uh, so I wanted to read the story of, uh, or a short, a short part of the story. We're not going to read the whole thing. In 1 Samuel chapter 17, I'm sorry. And we're just going to read just a few verses out of here because y'all know this story, but I just wanted to bring it to your attention. It says, and Saul said to David, you are not able to go against the Philistine, which is Goliath, to fight with him, for you are a youth, you're a child. And he's a man of war from his youth. But David said to Saul, well, watch, watch what David says real carefully here. First he says, your servant used to keep his father's sheep. And when a lion or a bear came and took a lamb out of the flock, I went out after it and I struck it. So David used to kill bears and things that would try to take the sheep. He says, and delivered the lamb from its mouth. And when it arose against me, I caught it by its beard and I struck it and killed it. Your servant has killed, I've killed both lion and bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them, seeing that he has defiled or defied the armies of the living God. So he's saying, just like I did to the bear and the lion, that's what I'm going to do to Goliath. And then he says in verse 37, moreover, David said, the Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear, he will deliver me from the hand of the Philistine. So notice how at the beginning, Pastor Larry, he starts off by saying, I did this. I did that. I killed the bear. I killed the lion. And then look, look what he does right here very cleverly. He gives it all to God. Yeah. He yeah. says, the Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion, he will deliver me from the hand of the Philistine. Yeah. You see how he accredited everything that he yeah. did to God. Amen. He gave it all back to the Lord. That's why there's nothing better that you can do in life than whenever you do get a blessing or you ever do get uplifted, you give it back to God. Amen. You say, God, I have this job because you gave this Amen. job to me. I have these children because you gave these children yes, to me. Amen. I have these finances in my bank account. I have my health because you've given it to me. Amen. I got clothes on my back and food in my fridge, Lord, because you've given it to me. Amen. And some people might come to you and say, but you worked and you, you earned that money. Yeah, but God gave me the strength to go to work so that I can earn this money. And he's the reason why I'm waking up every day. Amen. So everything in the end ultimately will all go back to God. Now, there's a scripture that says something like that in the Bible. Everything will go back to God. Everything is finished at God. He's the author and he is the finisher. He's A to Z. He's the beginning and the end. So why take credit for anything? Why lift ourselves up? when We're going to be gone in a few years anyways. He's the one who's going to stand forever. And I love the way David did that. He said, just, to, you know, I used to do this. And there's nothing wrong with saying that. You know, I did this. I did that. But then he goes back and he says, the Lord was the one who actually, actually delivered me from the hand of the man. And just the way he delivered me out of that situation, he's going to deliver me from Goliath as well. David was so sure of himself. And I'm so jealous of David for that because he's so sure and confident in what he believes. Amen. Not, you know, I, I, we should all strive to be like David in that area. You know, like we, we're here not because we think. Yeah. We're here because we know. Amen. We know what God has done for us. And he says, he will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said to David, go and the Lord be with you. And then jump down to verse 45, just a few verses. It says, then David said to the Philistine, so David, he went, he, he met Goliath, and this is where we pick up the story. I'm trying to take a little bit out for the sake of time. And he says, David said to the Philistine, you come to me with the sword and with the spear and with the javelin. I love what he says, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. And then he says, this day... The Lord will deliver you into my hand, and I will strike you. He's using that same language. I will strike you, and I'll take your head from you. And this day I will give the carcasses of the camp 
Uh, keep going, Pastor Larry. I will give the carcasses of the camp of the Philistines to the birds of the air and the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. Then all this assembly shall know that the Lord does not save with a sword and a spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hands. So it was. Uh, verse 48 and verse 49. So it was. When the Philistine arose and he came and he drew near to David, that David hurried and he ran towards the army to meet the Philistine. And David put his hand in his bag and he took out a stone and he slung it and struck the Philistine right in his forehead. <laughs> so that the stone sank into his forehead and he fell on his face to the earth. So God says that, uh, David says, God is going to do this for me. Why? So that all the world will know that there is a God in Israel. And he says, just like, just like God delivered me out of this situation, he's going to deliver me out of this situation as well. And some of y'all need to start speaking that same type of language in your life. Just how God got me that kid when I didn't think I was going to have that child. Or just like God met, came through with my finances in the past, years ago, back in 1990 something or 2003, whatever, God will bring me out of this situation Amen. as well. Amen. So in other words, hey, why panic over COVID? Why fear right. over panic, thinking that it's going to take our life? Is, is anything too hard for the Lord? No, no, no. Nothing is too hard for God. Just the way yes. he delivered you out of that situation, he'll deliver you out of this yes. situation. Yes. But it goes back to your mindset. Are you, are you willing to say, and do you have your mind on the cross, the wisdom, the power of God, to say that God is the one who's going to do Amen. this for me? Y'all, it's really as simple as that. Give the credit to God. Start saying, I don't know if I'm going to be, you know, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get out of this situation. Well, I know in my own self I can't get out of this situation, but I know that God will deliver me out of this situation man. no matter what. How many of you are speaking like that, man? That's, that's the kind of language we need to have going forward, knowing that God is going to deliver us out of anything. So David, David knew that the power was from God, and that's why he was a man after God's own heart, because he knew where the power was. Even again, let me, let me bring it back to this. David was king of the Israel, had many wives. That doesn't even sound like a good thing. <laughs> He had many wives and he had power, he had authority, he had an army that followed him. That whenever people would come and start telling David something, he had people that would ask him and say, do you want me to go and take off that person's head for you? That's how powerful he was. But even though he had all that power and all that ability, he knew where the real power was from. He knew where the real wisdom was from. It was from God. That's, that's where the power and the wisdom of God lies today. It's in the message of the cross. It's in the power and what Jesus did for you. So in other words, guys, it's a simple message. But if you don't know what to do, go back to the cross. Amen. Go back to the cross. Go back to where it began. Because this same message that delivered you and saved you is the same message that's going to get you through your problem today Amen. and tomorrow Amen. and the day after that and five years from now. 10 years from now, it's the same. It's always going to be the same answer, and I'm never going to tell you anything different. So if you don't like reruns on TV, you're not going to like this church. <laughs> I love reruns, amen. I watch reruns all the time. Just because it ain't new, that don't mean I ain't going to watch it, right? Hey, I, I watch plenty of reruns of different kinds of shows, amen. Sometimes me and Larry will watch reruns of Judge Judy, even though we already seen it. We're still going to watch it again, Amen. I saw it is as a rerun. The same message that saved you is the same message that's going to deliver you. So you got your answer. You're set for the rest of your life right there. If you can just keep that in your mind, keep that in your heart, that the true power and the wisdom of God is in the cross. Amen. Now, I'm going to give you one more scripture and then I'll be done. Go to Romans chapter one. I know, man, I'm fixing to end it. <laughs> I'm hungry too, man. Romans chapter one. <laughs> yes, amen. Romans chapter 1, verse 16, and I'll end it with this. <laughs> All right, I love this scripture too. One of my favorite scriptures. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes. 
for the Jew first and also for the Greek. For in it, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. As it's written, the just shall live by faith. And I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's why when I was in school, I didn't care that people thought it was weird that I walked around with the Bible. Because I wasn't ashamed of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I didn't care what people thought. Like I said, I just wanted God. Amen. And I'm not afraid to tell people about Jesus Christ. And I'm not afraid to tell people that the reason, where, the reason why I am where I am today, Margaret, is because of Jesus. Amen. And because of God. Amen. So I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Because look at what it says very clearly. It is the power of God. It is the, and then the other scripture says it's the wisdom of God. So when God tries to calculate problems, God says, hmm, how do I solve this problem? Oh, the cross of Jesus Christ, the message of the cross, what Jesus did for you. When God says, I need some power right now, oh, the message of Christ, the message of the cross, what Jesus did for you. That's the power and the wisdom of God. It's not worldly, it's not worldly wisdom. The world tells you that you need to be panicking right now. The world tells you that you need to do this, you need to do that, you need to get your money here, you need to go see this person, you need to go talk to this person. That's all worldly wisdom and self-help. But the wisdom of God is the message of the cross, and it's the power of God unto your very salvation. And if you would just remember that today, you'll be set for life. Amen? Amen. Let's all stand. Amen. 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 Yes, amen. God is... So good today, man. God is, is awesome in this place. Amen. So, Lord, we just thank you for your presence in this place. And we thank you for the message, Lord, that's, that, that you've given us today, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that there is power and there's wisdom in the cross of Jesus Christ, Lord. So, Lord, if there's somebody that's discouraged right now, if there's somebody that's panicking right now, they don't know what they're going to do, what, you know, what, what's going to happen when they go home. What's going to happen when they talk to this person? What's going to happen when this person fails? And they're worried and they might be panicked, Father. Let them know that the wisdom and the power of God is in Christ. And that if we would just go and if we would just kneel down at the cross, we would have the answer that we seek. Because your wisdom, the wisdom, think about that, church, the wisdom of God, the power of God, it's in the message of the cross. It's in what Christ did for you 2,000 years ago. And if we can just receive that, and Father, I'm, I believe that, and I speak it over everybody that's come here today and for those that are watching, Lord, that they would just receive the power and the wisdom of God. Right now, in Jesus' name. Why don't, why don't we just say that? Why don't, if you're at your computer, if you're here, just say, Lord, I receive, Lord, I receive. your power your and your power. wisdom. Father, I thank you that I have the answer that I seek in Jesus' name. Yes, amen. Lord, we just receive, Father, what you're doing, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the, the blessing, Lord, that's over yes. our life. We thank you for the word that you've given yeah. us, Lord. We just we know, Father, that your spirit is going before us, Lord. We know that your power and yes. your wisdom, Lord, has gone yes. before us, Lord. So we don't have to worry about what we're going to do, yes. you know, how we're going to fix this situation. Again, Lord, that's the world's wisdom, Father. But your wisdom says to look to you and to rest in you. In Jesus' name. So, Father, we just rest in you and look to you. And we thank you, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. And, Father, if there's, like, any specific needs, you know, in this house today, Lord, or anybody watching online, Father, we, I might not know what it is, but I know that you know what that situation is, Lord. And, you know, continue to move on these situations and continue to, to, to touch people's lives, touch people's hearts, Father. There are people that need healings in their yes. body, Lord. Give them that healing right now in Jesus' name. Lord, we rebuke sickness, Lord. We rebuke fear and discouragement and just an unknowingness, Father. And we speak, Father, positivity. And we speak love and joy and peace yes. in these situations. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. And the church said, Amen. Yes. Amen, church. Amen. I love y'all. Y'all are dismissed. <laughs>